48 f***ing seconds of logos set over some discount-ass Harry Potter music. I don't care if the score is by Marco Beltrami, who's kind of a badass. That's some discount-ass Harry Potter music. Stories heal. Stories hurt. You know what else hurts? Every goddamn movie opening with incorporeal narration. If we repeat them often enough, they become real. Actually, they become urban legends, which then become movies, where we have to suffer through a former Noxzema spokesperson acting through her eyes. So I guess that's kind of scary. Now it's time to take yourselves out of your graves, Mill Valley. It's Halloween! DJ metaphors. Look, I know that some people wait until the day of Halloween to display their jack-o'-lantern, but this is a restaurant, man, and they know how to exploit the season. She would have had that up to advertise her pumpkin spice patty melt since late August. I'm sorry, Zoe Coletti, but there's only room in this world for one precocious and talented red-headed teenager that acts in horror movies, and her name is Sophia Lillis. A main character in a horror movie is a fan of horror movies cliche. And we've got a main character in a horror movie is a writer cliche. If we get a main character in a horror movie is sad, most likely from a prior tragic event cliche, this movie will hit the horror movie cliche trifecta and win a set of steak knives. Stella! I don't want to go trick-or-treating. They're leading off with The Terror? Not only is that film a couple of years old at this point, it also sucks all the balls. Everyone will be asleep before Night of the Living Dead starts. It's 1968, man. The only proper double bill with Night is Rosemary's Baby. Do better, sh**ty drive-in. Oh good, we've got our bullies in a small town setting. This sh** couldn't be more Stephen King, even if a St. Bernard and a 1958 Plymouth Theory popped up. You liked it. I liked it. Not every goddamn horror movie these days has to be it. I said Spider-Man, not... Spider man. Be happy the Lord provided. What the hell? Chuck's spider costume must have taken much longer to construct than an actual Spider Man suit, right? The only things to the real deal are a unitard and a gimp mask. Also, Chuck waits until he gets the entire costume on before saying anything about it. Sight gags are fun, aren't they? Mom, can I please breathe? How can anyone breathe in this moment? Just because he's hiding the bag of shit behind his back doesn't mean his mom wouldn't smell it. At least I'm not a clown. For the last time, I'm a Pierrot. Pretentious and confusing Halloween costumes. Eaters, the grossness of this prank notwithstanding, how the f did he get the bag to land in this exact position? He couldn't have anticipated this location of the car or that Ruth would have her window down. I'm gonna murder them! Look, I understand he's upset, but is Tommy's murder boner seriously strong enough to abandon his car in the middle of this yard? That is a rock hard murder boner right there. How are they already this deep in the woods? They were literally just running down a driveway two seconds ago. I'm gonna get you! With a baseball bat? man, I thought a bully was supposed to know more about his weapons. Jesus, this movie's dark. And yes, I know that's part of the title, but it's scary stories to tell in the dark, not scary stories set in the pitch black. This is taken? Uh, I don't guess not. Holy random coincidence, Batman. There are a ton of cars out here, but Stella just happens to find the one with the amiable driver that's sympathetic to their plight. You live in here? He can tell that just by sniffing a blanket. So what are you doing alone at a drive-in? Why didn't they just set this story in modern day? Seriously, look at these kids. Is there anything about them? Hairstyles, glasses, manner of speech that in any way denotes 1968? How did they not see Tommy and his goons approaching the f***ing car? There are four of these assholes, three of which are on high alert. Everyone needs to get out. You know, this bully isn't that bad. I mean, he assaulted a scarecrow a while back and stole what he thought was candy from the kids, but I mean, it's not like he's a racist shithead or anything. You're not gonna try and run away like mommy too now, are you so? The hell is up with bullies bringing up family members to insult people? What teenager is all up to date on the shenanigans of their schoolmates' parents? Also, discount Skeet Ulrich here just had flaming poo dropped in his lap, but he remains unconcerned about the burning and the smell, so long as he can get his jollies off on threatening some juveniles. Did I say something? Her, her mom left when she was a kid. Weepy stories to tell while you're parked. Okay, there, I saw it. You did? If I did, man, I might as well be blindfolded by a mask from Christian Grey's Red Room for about 80% of this movie. And if that's the case, might as well include a butt plug from his collection, too. I need something to distract me from this dull as hell opening. Yep. Just as I thought. I got this place locked up pretty tight. Party pooping Piero. Sarah told them stories. Scary stories. Roll credits. What's this? I know I've been bagging on the darkness of this movie, but this is where it becomes absurd. He finds a secret f***ing passageway here with no assistance of a flashlight, a torch, or even a f***ing zippo? Also, even though countless kids and probably homeless squatters have been all over this damn house, it's tonight when the secret rooms were discovered, because movie's got a movie. So here's Stella walking into a creepy unlit secret passageway in a known murder house. And that's not even what she should be scared of. She met this drifter mother f***er like an hour ago, and she's barely even keeping an eye on him. Sarah's room. Or someone else's entirely. Or no one's room. You have zero way to know what exactly this place is. <laughs> Besides being a jump-scaring dick, what's Augie even doing? How the f*** did he find the one closet in which Chuck was hiding in this entire big-ass mansion? Tommy, stop it, okay? Just let them out. 
joke's over. Forget Bruce Wayne, it's clear that Tommy Milner is officially the world's greatest detective. He tracked the kids all the way out to the boonies, vandalized the car, discovered that they'd picked the lock to the murder house, entered the murder house, found a secret passageway, deciphered that they went inside, then closed them up for some casual f***ery. That's not like he followed them straight from the drive-in, since he obviously dropped his goons off. And he's been chugging beers all night. What is this dude capable of? Alright, we got him trapped in a secret room. Let's go ahead and do our ghost massacre. No, oh, man, I got a better idea. Let's have him leave and we'll f*** with him later. But they're f***ing right here for the taking, Jerry. Can we just do it my way just once? Why would you date a psychopath like that? It's better than fishing for turds. False equivalents. Collect them? Oh, I've read every single issue. Man, the 60s were f***ed up, right? Not only has Stella befriended this dude she just met under the duress of being chased by an asshole, she immediately invites him back to her house and into her bedroom. The basement is downstairs. And I'm not showing you because, well, this movie's already been about 92% of nothing happening, so... What? Tommy's addicted to chicks. Why is a scarecrow so close to the house? Aren't scarecrows supposed to be out in the field? This motherfucker seems like it's only there to provide convenient dick vengeance for Tommy. Corn mazes. Corn mazes? I will say this is a much more effective use of corn as a scare tactic than all of the Children of the Corn movies combined. But this movie made me think of those heaps, so my hands are tied. Well, that's definitely the nastiest case of hay fever I think I've ever seen. Whoa there, movie. Who turned the lights on? I thought this entire movie was supposed to be nigh unseeable. Look, I think it'd be a good idea if you stuck around for a few days. Comprende? Rodriguez. Oh, so he's a racist head too. I have a bad feeling that this is one of those movies in which anyone who's not the main character is an unholy asshole. You let a ghost story get into your heads. That's all. It is. I really wish we had a reason for Augie being the designated scary story cock blocker in this movie. Sure, he's a little austere, but he was also in on describing the Bellows house. And he's certainly otherwise in lockstep with his two other buds. So if this scarecrow is now Tommy, where did Harold go? And was Harold someone who also got turned? This has the makings of a killer installment in an anthology film. But here it's a side note with no good answers, and it leaves me as unsatisfied as my freshman year in college. What was the first part of this movie for? There was all that background to the fight with Tommy, but his ass is already grass. Literally. You got enough zit paint on there? It's a spider bite, you butt pimple! Oh. Even in 1968, how is Ruth not seeking medical treatment for a goddamn spider bite? Especially a painful one that's on her face! Also, butt pimples. I took this back to the house. <laughs> what? How's it getting? How's it back here again? You know, I'm super glad we don't have to go through the nonsense of Stella accusing Ramon of going back and getting the book and with her. But at the same time, why doesn't she assume that Ramon went back and got the book to f*** with her? How does that work? Talk to text? You gotta admit, for an undead specter that delights in the murder-death kill of rando teenagers in her town, she's got excellent penmanship. Movie will eventually show us that when Stella asks Sarah Bellows to tell her a story, all the kids in the house were affected. But when Stella told the story to Ramon, she said, If you come to the Bellows house at dark and ask Sarah to tell you a story, It'll be the last story you ever hear. By that rationale, this should only affect Stella. It was the only rule the movie has set up so far, and it's already retconned it 20 minutes later. I'm eating the stew. The stew in the fridge? Yeah, well, someone made it. How high does Augie have to be right now to eat the sudden stew that's literally confirmed to be made by no one in this house? Look, I've been extremely high, and I've eaten a lot of weird shit while extremely high. And even I won't dive into anonymous sudden stew. There was a toe in the stew. Nothing. No response to this. No told you so, really, or how could you not notice a f***ing toe on your spoon? And then he heard the voice again. But they've already said he should have heard it once before. The sound scared him. It was a voice. And he didn't. So why is the book correlating to real life shenanigans only just now? That's Augie's bed. That dude was pushing six feet easy. No way he's sleeping on that baby bear bed. I was the one that found the book. I took it home. This is not your fault. It is. You know, I caused every single bad thing to happen in my life. My mom leaving. Now, Augie. So there have only been two bad things in Stella's life? I chalked that up as a win. Let's find him. I don't think he's coming back. I guess that's that then. No need to look around to see if he ran away from the ghost, check back at the spook house to see if Sarah's holding him there, or even give his parents a call, right? Also, I thought these guys were thick as thieves, but they waited until now to contact Chuck, all so that they could meet in the middle of the drive-in? Hell, they could have powwowed at either Augie or Stella's place last night while the trail was still hot. Ain't no parents around at either of those houses. God damn it, this is, this is why I don't read books. Funny line, but this is why you don't read books? Because they're all demon-possessed, murderous, fire-retardant death tomes? I think J.K. Rowling would argue with you there. Is there a picture of Sarah? No, it's just her name. Holy f is that a picture of a noose by the name of a girl who supposedly hung herself? 
f***ing 1800s media. I'll be honest with you, I've looked over these papers pretty closely, and it looks like the copy that they show feasibly matches each headline. But while doing that, I've lost track of who they're looking for and what the caretakers had to do with it, and whether or not everyone did know of Sarah's existence and her death. So for all this confusion, I'm gonna give the movie a big old scary skip. She's writing another story. The f***? It's not even dark out yet. Holy What's the funding for the art department at this school? Backstage area is bigger and nicer than Raquel Welch's in Scarsdale Surprise. Did Sarah seriously time this story to coincide with Ruth's big performance in the school play? Seems extra dickish on this one. At least Augie was just chilling at home by himself. Spider, I, I was the Spider-Man! Yelling in a library. Ah, it's the nothing! Quick, call Atreyu. Where's Artax? Hey, how'd Ruth get out of, you know, dying? Sure, she's now got some issues that are gonna require years of therapy, but all the other victims are dead as hell. I feel so sorry for that girl sitting down there in the darkness all by herself. So I gave her this murder book so she could kill a bunch of people and not feel so lonely. There is no magic, child. There is only rage. So, rage magic then? Then how is she still writing the stories? Stories hurt. Stories heal. This is not an answer. It's election day, folks. Let your voice be heard. Say no to the war. Say no to Vietnam. Vietnam parallels are not new at all in the horror genre. Movies like Night of the Living Dead, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Death Dream tackle them straight on in imaginative and horrifying ways. Here it feels more like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we set this in the 60s and mentioned Vietnam so we can pretend to be deep? Jeez, they sure did write the parents right the hell out of this movie. I get that Stella's dad works a lot, presumably at the DEA, but what's up with Chuck's folks? His mom seemed perfectly doting and engaged before he went out on Halloween, but now she's as present as an authority figure in a Charlie Brown special. Where did they even go? That looks like a secondary hallway that would only serve as an option if you're kid sneaking around trying to dodge the staff. Be quick. Be fine. Yeah, because I'm sure Stella is well familiar with this hospital's filing strategy and knows exactly what she needs to locate to stop a witch's curse. Do you remember Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children? No? I think it was the one where Eva Green smoked a pipe and turned into a bird. Anyway, it was one of the most forgettable movies I've ever seen. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't good enough to even stick in my brain, since it was a mashup of Harry Potter, Dark Shadows, Chronicles of Narnia, The House with the Clock in Its Walls, and every other quirky magical tween movie you've ever seen. I bring this up now because I'm having the exact same issue with this movie. What this way? Sound the alarm! Sound the alarm? Sound the alarm? Here's a well-fed teenager running about in the hospital hallway, not the Joker dressed up in a nurse's costume, man. Who is the mercury from the mail? You poison the water. So, all this boils down to an Aaron Brockovich plot that probably wouldn't have passed muster on an episode of The Practice. Also, Jesus Christ, this wholly unnecessary scene of listening to Sarah get tortured while expositing family secrets goes on for all the some time. Charlie had a dream of a red room. Charlie. Chuck. What? Sarah can now record over an old wax cylinder recording with her most recent story? She has literally no limits to her abilities. All these kids should be dead, and I should be watching a better movie. Why is the pale lady Chuck's monster? I know he's had dreams about her, but they also involve the old lady on the bed and her dog that he's actually seen. So where are those assholes? Is Sarah Pennywisein Chuck here so that he sees only what she wants him to see? Or is the hospital seriously this empty in the middle of the f***ing day? Because I don't think you can give a plausible explanation about either option. I didn't leave you. <laughs> would never do that to you. There are some interesting effects and legitimate scares in this movie, but there's also so much filler like this that's not earned. Hell, Stella's dad had like 30 total seconds of screen time so far. Rules don't apply to draft dodgers. You think I wouldn't find out? Ramon Morales. Oh, he's a draft dodger. What a dickhead. Yeah, lock him up and throw away the key. This is definitely a plot point that the audience for this movie really connects to. You didn't save anyone. She's stuck in the nut house for the rest of her life. Wow, the power of positive thinking from good old Sheriff What's-His-Dick. Even by the primitive standards of this era and location, there's no way they'd predict Ruth would be institutionalized forever. It's not even like he's trying to intimidate Stella with hyperbole. He wants her to go home. It was a dark and stormy night in a horror movie on the night of the climax cliche. I'm sure Santa wanted to change things up after so many years, but I don't think this new look is gonna work out. Hard to write jingly carols about a jangly man. Are you me. This is one of those lines in a horror movie that reads much more clever on paper. Instead of quipping wise, Chief Turner would be literally shitting himself right now. Did Jangly Man really have to do this whole reanimator thing? Given how skinny he is, he could have fit down that chimney in one piece with no problem. He even squeezes through the f***ing cell bars later. Whoa, is it cool for him to kill Gil here? I thought the story only focuses on the target, not collateral damage. Seems like you can beat this monster pretty easily with a decent chiropractor. At what point do the monsters obey the laws of physics? Like the spiders that were living in Ruth's face were magical. Then when they got out, they were scared off by mop water. And this asshole is able to T-1000 himself out of the situation, but not before Ramon has plenty of time to run away. But poor Chuck just got f***ed. 
considering that there was no physical way for him to avoid the pale lady. Yeah, really, the creepiest thing this movie can do at this point is turn a f***ing lamp on. You may ask how Sarah was able to transport Stella's entire body into her own, only a hundred years ago. F*** you, the movie immediately replies. <laughs> Ah yes, the only thing that can truly slow down this supernatural beastie, a 100-year-old interior door. I have another story just for you. Can this one actually be, I don't know, scary? Stella. This movie has more mentions of the name Stella than a streetcar named Desire and 1990's Stella combined. If you can hear me, tell her the truth. No. Wasn't this the plan all along? Sure, the setting has changed and stuff, but meeting up with Sarah was exactly what Stella was planning to do. You took my friends, two of the people that I love most. But I do have to thank you for leaving me that homeless dude I just met a few days ago. He's pretty smoking hot. The rage, the rage has to stop, Sarah. Wish someone had said that back in 1999, preventing the global suffering of the rage carry too. Stories hurt, stories heal. 70 more seconds of stellaration! Oh, cool. Stella got a first place story out of this ordeal. That should take some of the sting out of the brutal deaths of her closest friends. This final shot seems super important. Like they're just starting a new journey to find their parallax friends. And they know where to begin. But movie forgets to actually tell us any of that sh Get in my belly! They're minerals! Jesus, Marie, I got some geodes coming that are very delicate, all right? And I will not accept any boxes that have damage. Those delivery jagoffs, I'm telling you, I'm not getting ass raped by those bastards, all right? At least I'm not a clown. Me like I'm a clown, I amuse you. Hey, Ike, you bird. You want a little pie? Wiggle your big toe. You shouldn't have taken the book. You made her angry. I'm always angry. Did your mom ever teach her anything? Teach her? Black magic? It's true. The Force, the Jedi. 